When I write web applications, I usually sort of avoid a persistence layer as much as possible. You know, introducing a database is just a headache. Managing people's data, a headache. Data retention, a headache. So recently, I've been playing around with uh, DynamoDB from AWS Key Value Store, and it has fantastic sort of TTL ability. And I sort of fleshed this out now into a little project on its own, and I just want to introduce you to it because I think it's going to be really handy for you guys. So let me switch to the fact that, okay, I've got 40 upvotes on the Golang Reddit, so it must be good, right? <laughs> um, so let's, let's walk through it. Here's the project itself. And let me just clone it out just to prove to you that I'm not lying. Uh, YouTube. Okay, is that, is that font kind of readable? Maybe I'll make it a bit bigger. This is Terminus font before you ask. So the idea here is that you clone out this repo and it gets you started. So feel free to use this as a base moving forward, writing serverless and DynamoDB apps. But most importantly, I, I have got a nice um, local host set up here too, because I'm a big fan of uh, fast iterations and making it local, most importantly. So let's just go inside here. Let's read the readme. Uh, so to get the local DB running here, let's hopefully, oh my gosh, I've got it running somewhere else. Oh, I have it running over here somewhere. Let's kill that, kill that, kill that. Let's try that again. <laughs> okay, this is the DynamoDB running locally now. I have to, unfortunately, sort of create the schema. I've got a little script here to do that. That sort of sets up the basic ID and the, the sort key, which you need to. I'm not going to go into details here. I'm just going to quickly, quickly go through this. And then I have the, the little sort of reloader that, that allows me to, to uh, develop. So that's running on 3000. I usually run um, VS Code. I know I'm ashamed. Sometimes I use Vim still. Um, okay, so what do we have here? Let me demo. Let, let me demo it for you. So localhost three thousand. We have a simple little input element, a color picker, and I can just choose a color, and it gets submitted, and then it gets written to the local Dynamo DB. It uh, it's has a couple of attributes like uh, created time and then I set expiry in, into one minute into the future. You can't actually seemingly test this locally but once you push this to AWS um, this record basically gets deleted after uh, well, well a minute approximately. Well AWS actually say that they um, they don't guarantee it to be deleted <laughs> exactly when you're when you're uh, when your TTL expires. Um, so, but anywho, this is it uh, running on AWS in a serverless sort of context. And you can have a play around with it. You know, you can figure out my IP and, uh, and such and so forth. So I hope you like it. Um, do feel to have a play with it. Whilst I have you, I wanted to ask a question about authorization. Um, it's explained here, but I'm just wondering to myself, is there an easy way to, you know, I, I basically, I, I basically, currently I just log the IP addresses, the author, but kind of just want to sort of leverage your social login, you know, your Gmail address or your Twitter or your GitHub address to basically, con uh, you know, attribute th that content to you, to you. But I'm actually just not sure how to do it in the least uh, complex way possible. Hence this Stack Overflow post. So do please, um, you know, comment below or just answer on the Stack Overflow po post if you have some recommendations. I did have a brief look at, at all the zero and I didn't seem to know, it didn't seem to click to me. 
um, how to integrate it. It didn't seem easy at all. So thanks for getting this far, guys. Do enjoy that Dynamo starter project. Get developing in Go locally and uh, make some awesome web apps. See you guys. Bye.